Thanks for tuning in to this episode of the Texas Fly Fishing Report. This is the companion YouTube channel to www.texasflycaster.com where you can go to find highly detailed information about fly fishing in Texas. Hi and welcome to the Friday, May 1st, Texas Fly Fishing Report. Thanks for joining me today. It is Friday, May 1st and... Most of our considerations this week and weekend are about the weather. We've got a window of opportunity here in North Texas and on into East Texas, pretty much throughout the state, to take advantage of the water that's come our way in the last week, two weeks, and go fishing. Right now what I'm seeing is uh, lakes that are at capacity here in North Texas, at and over capacity in East Texas. Of course, that means the rivers are running too, below the dams and between the lakes. Uh, as we go on down to the coast, I'm not seeing a lot from people down there, so that tells me that they've got a lot of fresh water in the system. Otherwise, maybe they don't, maybe they got a lot of fish and they're so busy catching fish they're not doing anything or talking about it, but my guess is that the system's pretty well inundated with fresh water on the in inland waters of the Texas Gulf Coast. And that's what's going on. I'm gonna keep it short. I'm not gonna be fishing this weekend or anything. I rarely fish on the weekend. Um, and I've got a Bob Dylan concert to go to tomorrow, so that's going to be quite exciting. You can expect some more on that. If you decide to go, think in terms of sight casting in shallow, grassy areas around lakes for bass. I mean, they're going to be up. They're going to be in the shallows now. The water's settling. What we need is a little more equilibrium in water temperatures because all the fresh water coming in is a different temperature from the water already in lakes. If you're fishing the river systems, then you know that there's a lot of water. It's kind of uh, kind of crazy out there in some places, so be careful. But otherwise, it's a place where you want to, you know, if these fish are holding, they're going to be holding out of the current, moving into the current. Just like a trout in, in cold water, this warm water stuff is very similar as far as the, the feeding uh, avenues. One tip I have for you, this is a short and sweet uh, episode today, is... Some of you guys, you know, you know, I talk about and, and uh, try to give tips on using cameras and photography and stuff like that. One thing I've noticed with the GoPro Hero 4, if you happen to have one, it appears that they've actually like jiggered the firmware in that camera to where, <laughs> where the battery level it shows on the back of the camera is not actually how much battery is left. So no matter what, continue to charge those GoPro Hero 4s just like you did the 3s because instead of making the batteries a whole lot better or anything like that, they've simply, simply changed the firmware inside the camera to show it has a charge when actually you'll, you'll let your camera sit for maybe four or five days. It, it'll sit longer but it won't last. After say four or five days you've got to put a charge into it before you take it on the water because what happens is it looks good on the, on the actual meter on the back and it's not good. So recharge those cameras on the way to where you're going and make sure you at least bump it a little bit and get a better charge out of it. Because the other day I went out with a three quarter charge showing on the back and it had been sitting for a few days. I got about 10 minutes out of the camera. So very important on GoPro Hero 4s to uh, kind of ignore the, the battery meter on the back and continue with a regimen of charging those things up. And, you know, it's really important in the life of a battery to discharge it, too, so make sure you use it. If you have any information about fly fishing in Texas, feel free to let me know. I got a great uh, text message the other day from Conroe, Texas, and Lake Conroe, and there's definitely grass carp moving there, and that lake is at or above the conservation pool. I mean, what you'll see over there is uh, carp that migrate a lot like cows do on a pasture and grass carp and so keep your eyes out for that look around some of the the bridge abutments the bridges that go over the, the northern portions of that lake and things like that is you know that lake is not nearly as easy to access and fish as, as say lake ray roberts here north of where i live here in denton texas but that's what you get so give it a go you're going to need no more walking way like the videos of the past that I've run from Conroe, you've got to have a boat or a kayak to, to get on that water now because it's just, it's that capacity. So there's no, there's no shoreline to walk on or wade through. Thanks for watching. Hope you have a great weekend. I'm sure that uh, I'll get some more information from you guys and I'll just pass it along. You always want to check the uh, 
Twitter account. There's a bird sitting on the antenna of the of the camera right now. And he's, I think the bird is very mad because my bird nest is right up there. But anyway, um, that was wild. Make sure you watch the Twitter feed and the Instagram feed for photos from you guys, photos from me, and all kinds of information, including fish splashes. Thanks for watching. Have a great weekend. Thanks for watching this episode of the Texas Fly Fishing Report. Thanks also goes out to the sponsors. If you need more information, be sure to visit www.texasflycaster.com. And if you have any information about fly fishing in Texas, feel free to share it, and we'll be glad to get it on the report.